Hello and welcome to the final episode of the 2024 Royal Ascot mini-series for SBK, where myself, Tom Collins and Ross Miller will run you through all of Saturday's action, no matter what your results have been like. Hopefully you've enjoyed Royal Ascot this year. It's been fantastic weather and we've seen some fantastic races and hopefully you've also enjoyed these podcasts. If you have, please like this one uh, down below and also click subscribe. Next week we'll conduct our usual podcast, which is uh, filmed on a Thursday, ready for Saturday's action. And we'll be joined by our regular host, Jess Stafford, who won a race at Royal Ascot this week with Bellocchio. I'm sure you're all pleased that she'll be in the host chair and I'll be back in the analyst chair. Um, Ross, two questions for you before we get stuck into Saturday's racing. Firstly, how has Royal Ascot treated you this year? Secondly, just how good was Fairy Godmother in the first race on Friday? It's, it's been tough going to see her. Winners have been hard to come by. A few decent prized each way wanted to sort of kept my hope alive but it's almost the hope that kills you isn't it um hoping for a, a strong friday as we finish off friday and, and saturday fairy godmother i mean I, I i was pretty confident about heaven's gate i thought ryan was on the wrong one i mean i've got a bit wrong this week i think that's about as much as I've, big as i've got wrong all week she was just incredible um hands and heels switched three times quickened up yeah I, i've got a new favorite filly it was the first race of the week that really got me genuinely excited and I, I completely forgot about the fact that I you know tipped the third back the third didn't care yeah in fairness to you Heaven's Gate actually ran a very nice race from the front and looked like she kind of set sail for home and wasn't going to get caught at one stage but she did get tired late and very godmother swooped clear she definitely looks like a 1000 guineas horse to me I imagine she does to you as well absolutely absolutely I think the further she goes the better she's going to go and, and she's a she's a big strong filly, but she's going to strengthen up even further I would think yeah, she was potentially the most visually impressive winner all week at Royal Ascot. Obviously, we're filming this midway through Friday's card and we haven't seen Saturday's action yet. So it is an early statement, but so far, so good for Fairy Godmother. My Royal Ascot's been a bit hit and miss. Awful Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not making any bones about that. Much better on Thursday. Got me up into a level stakes profit if you've backed all of these selections on the daily pods uh, to one pound. But Friday's been a bit middling yet again. So hopefully... On Saturday, Ross and I can both salvage something and get back into the positives. Um, we've got some fantastic races coming up. One last question, though. If you could have one horse, maybe two, for the tracker moving forward, from what we've seen so far, who would you take? Well, uh, Holloway Boy was, a, was a, a, a tough beat in the Royal Hunt Cup, just got no luck, finished fifth. But I wouldn't class him as a tracker horse because it seems to be Ascot is the only track he does it at. So probably not mad about him. I thought carry the one in the Buckingham Palace yesterday. One off 99 at Newmarket, ran off 101 here. Don't think he got the brakes, really. I think he can uh, certainly win a race off, off that mark, providing the handicapper doesn't bump him up too much. Yeah, that's definitely a horse to put in there. And one that I, I like that because it's a dark horse, not one that everyone would look at and think, well, God, next time out, this horse will win. Usually when you get horses like that, e.g. King's Gambit, e.g. Kasaya, both of whom are well back this week, got a luckless-ish trip. Uh, one was a poor ride, one was very luckless um, in defeat. They're going to be over better next time. So those types of horses, albeit you want them in your tracker, they're just too obvious. Carry the one is one that isn't as obvious, which is a good ploy. Here's another one. Coward of the county. I thought he ran very well in the Coventry. Made his move at the wrong part, um, part of the race and stayed on really nicely for seventh, I believe. He's worth well, way more than that form. Uh, I expect him to take a big step forward next time and he should win. So put him in your tracker as well. OK, we'll begin the final episode of this mini series with Saturday's racing, covering the first race on Saturday, the listed Chesham Stakes. Before we get into it, SBK are offering their 25% winnings boost on this race. Max stakes of £10. TNCs do apply. Same offer I've been saying all week in these daily pods. Go check it out if you have an SBK account and want to get that extra return. Four favourites have won the, in the last 10 editions of the Chesham, all of whom were trained by Aidan O'Brien, and they were all sent off short prices. Will we see another one with bedtime story? She, he could definitely fit that bill. Very impressive first time up. Currently five to two favourite uh, with SBK. Age of gold for Godolphin team, nine to two second favourite. Ten to one bar. Who do you like? I prefer Age of Gold, TC. Bedtime story, her win at Leperstown came over half a furlong further on slower ground. Um, I just wonder if she's going to be quick enough for this. Age of Gold looked really immature on his debut at Yarmouth. Slow away from the gate. Wandered around for a bit. Took a while to find his stride. Had to be ridden along. But then relaxed beautifully through the mid part of the race. Got to the front and struck me as a, as a cult that didn't have a clue what he was doing. Right inside the last half furlong. Seemed to switch on and, and pulled right away. The fact he relaxed, I really like. This seven furlong trip is a fair old test for these two years at this time of the year. 
he's going to race efficiently. I think that's a, a strong uh, attribute to have. So I do like him of the ones at the head of the market. At a bigger price, from an unfashionable stable, David Evans got Chilly Breeze. Um, by Ulysses, he won over five furlongs at Nottingham on his second start, and that's worked out pretty well. Runner-up Tijar has won, uh, TJ, I should say, has won twice since. The fourth place, the Dragon King, has won since. David Evans can saddle Royal Ascot winners. Obviously, had Rohan to win the Wokingham back in 2021. And the dam of uh, Chili Breeze is a half-sister, or sorry, a full sister, I should say, to Holloway. Half-sister to Holloway Boy. He was by Ulysses. All ties in a pedigree. Holloway Boy won this two years ago. So I think it'd be a big price. Might get overlooked. Certainly got the pedigree to win a race like this. Yeah, Age of Gold 9 to 2, Chili Breeze 33 to 1 at the moment. So a big price there. A couple of selections uh, in the Cheshire for Ross. I have no strong opinion on the race. I'd love to see Bedtime Story win as a neutral purely because the filly she beat on debut, Giselle, is fantastically bred out of a newspaper of record, one of the best US. Uh, Phillies and mares in recent years so I would like to see that form boosted I imagine there's a strong chance that will happen if I was to have a bet in the race which I probably won't uh, it'll be on Mottawa Heege Carl Burke's just done brilliantly well in these two-year-old races all week and this two-year-old who got beat on debut but still ran respectably is the first horse to run in King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz and son silks over on these shores obviously major owner in Saudi Arabia uh, plenty of horses out there they purchase horses from the US and the UK it would be fantastic if they have the winner of this because it should see an influx of horses for Royal Ascot uh, in the future. So I'll be interested to see how Motta Wahij gets on in the opener. On to the Harwick now, 3.05 p.m. and another tricky race. Continuous is the current favourite for Aidan O'Brien and the brilliant Ryan Moore. They've had a fantastic week, of course. Middle Earth and Desert Hero enter the race on the back of an Aston Park matchup between the two. Middle Earth got the better of Desert Hero that day. Maybe Desert Hero can bounce back. How do you see this race? I'm keen on continuous TC. I think uh, he's probably gone still, despite being a second winner, a little bit under the radar, not as uh, fashionable perhaps as some of them. Thought his great voyage to win was really impressive. That came on good to firm ground, so I've got no issue for that. For all these, a big horse, stays powerfully. Um, and even his second at this track last year, at this meeting last year behind King of Steel, reads really well, given what that horse went on to achieve. He's a long way clear of the ratings. My niggling concern is that in an interview, Aidan O'Brien described him as a big, gross horse that takes plenty of graft to get him fit. That is a slight concern. He's gone quite short as a price, but there was nothing else I wanted to take against him. So having put him up sort of anti-post last week, I'm going to stick with him for all. I don't think there's much value in the price anymore. Yeah, in fairness, you did put him up at much bigger odds yeah, in the anti-post preview pod um, a week or two ago. He is a short price now. The layoff does concern me, so I'm glad you covered that point. Um, I won't be having a bet in this race. I just think there are too many worries. Continuous is the best horse, in my opinion, and I'm sure many. Uh, but will he be ready to fire first up? Middle Earth, Desert Hero, they're hard to judge. Middle Earth definitely improving. Desert Hero, could he bounce back? If he does, he's a major player. But I'll be sitting this one out from a punting perspective. I will, however, be having a bet in the Queen Elizabeth II stakes at 3.40pm. Now, it is a cut-up field and probably the weakest turnout in this race for a number of years. However, that means there's some value in the market, don't you agree? Yeah, I, I do to see. I mean, quite where it is, I, I'm not sure. These aren't really my, my bag. But as I said last week, just think Cardem. You know, as you say, this is weaker than it was last year. Weaker than it's been for a long time. He rocked up last year out of form. Loved the quick ground. Loved the way the race panned out. Fast pace to run at. Won at 80 to 1. He's 20 to 1 still with the SBK. I just think that uh, he's got everything going for him in a wide open race where I would defy anyone to really convincingly put a line through anything um, he'll do for me. Yeah, Jim and Fitchy hey, are going to look for another success in this race. And Cardem is one of two runners for them. You like him. He's the long shot out of their pair. And I like the one that's a little bit shorter in the market. And that's Mitt Barhi. I've followed him since a two-year-old. He's always shown plenty of promise and was held in high regard by Roger Varian. But he just wasn't producing on the track. Since moving to Charlie Hills, he seems to have improved in that run at the Curra last time, where, yes, he was given a fantastic ride from Jamie Spencer. In my opinion, that was a career best. Now, I hate the draw in Stall 1. It's a major concern for me. But Jamie is a specialist on this straight track. Hopefully, he can get Mitt Barhi across into some cover, and therefore, he would be a major player. But hopefully, for one of us, Jim and Fitri Hay uh, will be celebrating in the winner's enclosure. The Jersey Stakes is up next at 4.25pm. It looks a good match as well between Hartem and River Tiber, who was second and third in the Irish 2000 Guineas behind Rosalian, who, of course, boosted the form earlier in the week with his emphatic success. Are you with one of the pair? 
Yeah, I am, TC. I mean, you go through it and there's lots of nice three-year-olds uh, in this. Uh, Native American, I think, is a horse that's got plenty going for him, although his form from Epsom took a bit of a knock today with Evade, uh, not showing all that well in the, in the Commonwealth. But I think River Tiber and Hartem are a class above it. They're above this class of, of Group 3, in my opinion. Um, the Irish Guineas form has been well boosted, obviously, by Rosalian. I just think River Tiber is a quicker horse than Hartem. I would have almost pegged Hartem as going up in trip. I'm surprised that they're coming back in trip for all this is a, is a stiff track. I think River Tiber, this seven furlongs on a stiff track could be perfect for him. I would have been against him if he'd have gone for the Commonwealth. I'm just not quite sure he's got that six furlong speed. But this seven furlongs on a stiff track, on this quick ground, I really like him. And I think, as with every Aidan O'Brien three-year-old this year, it's going to take a big step forward from the current. If he does that, uh, he's going to go very close indeed. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I'm also with uh, River Tiber in this race. Actually, I didn't mind him if he went to the Commonwealth Cup, but they chose to go for the slightly longer trip in the jersey. To me, he's the clear standout on uh, class. Whether he can reverse that form with Hartem, we'll see. Hartem's definitely going to take some money given the uh, form of the Watnan team this week and also Rosalian boosting uh, Hartem's guinea second. But I think River Tiber, who was only beaten a short distance by Hartem on his comeback in that race, has enough to turn the form around. Three races left. The Wokingham is the next one we'll cover at 5.05 p.m. 28 runners, 9-1 to the field. Give us a short list, I guess. Uh, I've got this down to one TC. Uh, Rumstar. Philly, I really like. She was very cheaply bought as a, as a juvenile, did really well in that season, and then trained on, surprisingly. I didn't, wasn't convinced she would. Stuck on really well uh, in the Commonwealth Cup over course and distance last year. Finished fifth, I think it was. Rallied really well. Then had a couple of poor runs and then went to Goodwood and unseated. She anticipated the gate and got rid of the jockey coming out the gate. And then went missing after that. And I just wonder whether that experience slightly upset her. The Phillies don't take much to, to sort of um, get them off their game. The return on heavy ground, though that was no good to her whatsoever at Bath, but then she was much better last time. Uh, good second behind Lethal Levy, conceding £11. She's now four, better, four pound better off with that rival. She loves this track. I think she's drawn on the right side of the track, or what we've seen today, I think she's going to be close to the right side of the track, providing the watering doesn't change yet. I thought she uh, had life chances. Yeah, I was looking high as well with draws here. I think you've got to be near side. The fact that Ryan managed to actually switch Fairy Godmother in the open on Friday suggests there is a big uh, difference between the sides of the track, despite the go and stick not saying that. So Rumstar, who I think is drawn 25, um, it should, she should be in the perfect spot. I'm also going to be with you with her. Um, I'll have a, a few quid on. I feel like we missed the price a little bit. Well, I certainly did. I don't know if you're already on, but she was 25 to 1 a day or two ago. Now she's only 12 to 1 with SBK. Hopefully she drifts a touch in the in the build up to the race, but as you say, she could be one of the classiest runners in in the field. And she was only beaten two and a bit lengths by Little Big Bear and Shaquille last year in, in the Commonwealth Cup. So very talented. Uh, the other horse I'm going to be betting, actually I've already bet this time, uh, is Albashir, who danced every dance in the big field handicaps last year. Won at York, uh, ran great in the Stewards Cup, the Air Gold Cup, the Scurry, among others. Finished 11th in this 12 months ago, but was slowly away. Jamie Spencer got into a bit of trouble. It wasn't his best ride, uh, and he finished off very quickly. In fact, I dipped into the sectionals, not to sound all Kevin Blake on you, but dipped into the sectionals um, on Albashir last year, and he ran the fastest final furlong out of every horse in the field, which is key. If he gets a better run, can sit closer. He's drawn very well in 31. I imagine he could go very close, albeit he's not been missed in the market. The penultimate race is the Golden Gates Handicap. Will we see King's Gambit 2.0 in here with Hands of God uh, for the same combination? Now, I say King's Gambit 2.0. Of course, he didn't win, but he's shaped like the best horse. Connections have exactly a similar type uh, in here with Hands of God. He's 7 to 2, Old Faithful 13 to 2, 9 to 1 bar. Do you like any of those? No, I struggle to, to pick my way through the top of the market, TC. Not a race I'll play in, I don't think. But the one that I thought was interesting was Palace Green. Um, made a really big move at York. Uh, last time and uh, just couldn't sustain it that was over a mile four um, finished third that looks like a perfectly decent run behind London City um, that was off a mark of 89 only up to 90 now um, I think that's still a competitive mark for this horse might just like the uh, quicker ground as well Oshin Murphy riding really well um, he would be the one that was most interesting to me but it's a race I'll sit out yeah right now Palace Green is 11 to 1 um, I honestly think there are six to eight horses in here who are extremely well handicapped. 
when it, you get a race like that, it's so difficult to choose which one. Um, none of them are going to be missed in the market. I'll wait until the last minute and play whichever is the biggest price. At this moment, I'm more keen on approval out of all of them for William Haggis. I was really impressed with his wins of success and he loves staying trips. It looks like he's only going to improve. But the likes of Hands of God, Portsmouth, I, I could keep going. There's loads in here. It's very tricky. Finally, we end with the Queen Alexandra Stakes over the unique two mile, five and a half furlong trip. You need a proper stayer in this race. Let's end with a winner. I love Dawn Rising to win back-to-back -back renewals. Proving stamina is the most important factor, in my opinion, in this event. He's definitely got it. Justified strong support last year to win it two to one. He was excellent at the line. It looked like he was powering through and he still had more to give. Being campaigned with this race in mind, yet he's four to one. I can't believe he's double the price. Do you agree or are you looking elsewhere? No, I can see. I can definitely see the angle, TC. I am looking elsewhere, though, with the Emmett Mullins train for Stilio. Um, I really liked his return last time over a mile and six behind Kiprios. Obviously, that form has received a boost. He was nine lengths behind, but I felt in the middle part of the race, there was an opportunity to go forward and really get put into the race. And they declined that opportunity. It looked to me like it was very much a prep run for something further down the line. Clearly this. He goes well at the track. His final run for Roger Varian before switching to Emmett Mullins was a third in a group three over a mile and four behind Al Kareem rated 112. Isra, who is rated 112, he's going to be higher than that now after his demolition job earlier this week. That was a strong run at a track on a trip short of his best. Um, I think he's um, been uh, lined up for this, so I'm quite keen on him. Bastilio currently 17 to 2 with SBK. Um, I think Dormizing 4 to 1 with SBK. Perfect. It's been a very long week, Ross. Thank you very much for your company on these daily podcasts. But it's now time for the final Napa Next Best uh, on Saturday. Please go ahead. Aiden O'Brien double to finish out the week, TC. Uh, continuous is the nap. Slightly tentative at the, at the price, as I said. And the next best is River Tiber. I think he's got absolutely perfect conditions in the jersey. Yeah, Aiden O'Brien and Ryan Moore has been the place to be all week. So you're probably not going to be far wrong. Continuous currently 13 to 8. River Tiber currently 7 to 4 at the time of recording. My nap is Dawn Rising uh, in the finale. Hopefully we can go out with a winner in the lucky last, as people like to say. Uh, that's a 6.15 and my next best is also River Tiber uh, in the 4.25. Before we go, just a reminder that SBK are offering that 25% winnings boost on the Chesham first race on Saturday. Go check it out. T's and C's do apply. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and the rest of the episodes this week. If you're a regular viewer, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of our future content. Be lucky on Saturday. 